You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newspeak South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Afghanistan enters its uncertain Taliban-led future. Jaish e Mohammed chief meets Taliban leadership, seeks help in conquering Kashmir. And UNSC resolution on Afghanistan addresses India's concerns on terrorism. Almost 20 years after the United States started its war on terror, driving the Taliban out of power, life is back to square one for millions of Afghans. With the victory of the brutal insurgent group, once again, future of Afghanistan is at stake. Thousands of men and women are grappling with the sudden Taliban takeover of their country and they are fleeing or in hiding as they await an uncertain future. A report. A video out in the public domain shows Taliban and Taliban supporters attending mock funerals in Afghanistan with coffins draped in British, US and NATO flags. Some of those in the crowds are holding gun aloft, while others are waving Taliban flags to celebrate a hasty exit for Washington and its NATO allies. The departure of the last U.S. cargo planes marked the end of a massive airlift in which thousands of people left Afghanistan. And the Taliban are now celebrating as they achieved a goal they had nurtured for two decades. The American يرغل ابتدانا هم يو ناقوبة انديشة اقدامو موك پلو ملي سر كي امريكانو تا دا خبر کرده وسي دوی باید زموك پا خاورة بانده تجاوز و نكي كم استون جسي پا دوزار يو كي واقع سوي وي دوی باید موك سر خبر کرده وي او جگره تا ارتيان نوه پیک سوي دا سي متاسفانا امريكانو دا اغا وقت چارواكو دا غرور نکار واخست او عقوبة دا خبال کار نو سنجوالي نن دا نتیجه سی دو دی پا مات تمامی گی او افغان ملت بریاغ ترلاس اکڑا او لوی امارکای و گتل او خپل حواد آزاد که دا نتیجه ترلاس از وقت دا طالبان ناو کنٹرول آل آف افغانستان اکسپٹ فور دا مانٹینیس پنشیر پروینس ویر ای فیو تاؤزن لوکل فائٹرز ہی پلیس تو ریزسٹ دیم کامن افغانس ان دا کنٹری ریمین فیرفل as there have been sporadic reports of killing and other abuses in areas under Taliban control, despite the group's pledges to restore peace and security. Journalists in Afghanistan are also fleeing the country, as they know that the brutal Taliban has a history of targeting the media professionals. Just a few days ago, a video of a television anchor from Afghanistan, surrounded by armed Taliban fighters, asking his audience to not be afraid became one of the most widely shared clips on social media. The Afghan news anchor, Bahishtar Ghand, who interviewed a Taliban spokesperson after the Taliban took power earlier this month, has fled Afghanistan, raising concerns about the future of female journalists in the country. Arghand says, the Taliban ordered her employer, Tolo News, to enforce all women to wear a hijab, and that female anchors were suspended in other stations. The women, the Taliban don't accept. So, uh, when a group of people don't accept you like a human, uh, they don't have any uh, good uh, picture from you on her mind, on his mind. So it is, uh, I believe it is so, so, uh, so, uh, so difficult. So you, you think there is a future for a journalist? There, you think a journalist can stay in Afghanistan? They can stay and live with her family in Afghanistan? So uh, 
when there is no future for me, how can I stay in Afghanistan? How can I continue my job? I just want to become wise of my people, not wise of a, a group of uh, a group of people came and said, uh, tell what we want. The United Nations has warned that up to half a million Afghans could flee the country by the end of the year and has called on neighboring countries to keep their borders open. The current crisis comes on top of the 2.2 million Afghan refugees already in neighboring countries and 3.5 million people forced to flee their homes within Afghanistan's borders. Among those who are already staying in different parts of the world, they fear the worst is yet to come. They remember the excesses of Taliban ideology, one that restricts women from education and employment and mets out swift justice to anyone who breaches the group's harsh interpretation of Islamic law. The future of Afghanistan is uncertain. Despite deep concern in the international community, Taliban have tried to assuage fears that their rule will be marked by the same level of brutality that became a hallmark of their previous stint in power. The international community and common Afghan people are now fearful of what comes next. While the world's focus has shifted to Afghanistan, not only Pakistan's ISI has stepped up terror activities in Kashmir, but also leaders of Pak Bak terror groups are seeking the help of Taliban in India-centric terror operations. The forcible takeover of Afghanistan by the Taliban, coupled with its recent meeting with Pakistani terrorists, has raised concerns about cross-border terrorism in New Delhi. A report. Pakistan's unfulfilled dream of annexing Kashmir from India has resuscitated amid Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan, as the country's terror leaders have been seeking the help of Taliban in India-centric terror operations of late. According to several reports, days after Kabul fell into the hands of Taliban, leader of Pakistan's jaish e mohammad Maulana Masood Azhar met Taliban leader Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar in Kandahar to ask for cooperation in fomenting terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir. A few days prior to the Taliban's win in Kabul, Masood Azhar had praised the terror group for bringing down the US-backed Afghan government. The JEM's leader commended Mujahideen accomplishments in Afghanistan in an article titled Manzil Ki Tara, that is, Towards the Destination, published in August. Masood Azhar has gone to convey this message to Baradar that I help you to win, to capture power in Kabul. Now give me return gift. It is a payback time. Give, fight with me in Jammu and Kashmir. Be with me in Jammu and Kashmir to create mayhem. Give me US weapons and military equipment. The second aspect is that FATF angle. That these terrorist organizations, JEM, El Askeri Toba, HM, they want to shift the area of operation from Pakistan to Afghanistan. So this is a very clever ploy. This is just trying to uh, uh, increase the intensity of terror in Jammu and Kashmir and Pakistan desperately wanting to get out of grey list. Although the Taliban had recently stated that Jammu and Kashmir is an internal issue of India and that issues with Pakistan must be sorted through bilateral talks, the words of the Islamist organization cannot be taken at face value. At a time of such an international crisis, 
meeting between Taliban and JEM terrorists have brought back haunting memories of the past as they share a close relationship and it was evident when Taliban provided safe haven to Jaish terrorists during the Kandahar hijacking of Indian aircraft IC-814 in 1999, following which Masood Azhar was released. Both the groups are also considered as ideological comrades in interpreting Sharia, the Islamic law, following the Deobandi school of Sunni Islam. Meanwhile, not only the terror leaders but political leaders of Pakistan's ruling party are also exposing their true intentions regarding Taliban. Unabashedly admitting Pakistan military's close ties with the Taliban and their anti-India agenda, Neelam Irshad Sheikh, leader of Pakistan tehreek e saf and a close aide of Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan talked about getting Taliban's help in conquering Kashmir during an on-air show. Afghanistan, mashallah, see, they say, the Taliban say, we are with you and inshallah, they will come and give us Kashmir to Kashmir. The Taliban takeover has come as a massive morale boost for jihadis all over the world. Recently, a top Al-Qaeda leader and a close aide of Osama bin Laden was reportedly seen in Afghanistan's Nangarhar province after hiding for at least a decade. Amin ul Haq, who was bin Laden's security chief, helped the Al-Qaeda founder escape U.S. forces in 2002 by moving him out of Tora Bora in eastern Afghanistan to Waziristan in Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. He was accompanied by a large convoy of heavily armed Taliban men and was greeted by a cheering crowd that shook hands with him and welcomed him. This has once again raised questions over the United States' claim of completely wiping out the terror group. This development is not just a wake-up call for the US but also for India. Recently, Al-Qaeda congratulated the Taliban and called for a war for Islamic Caliphate and the liberation of Kashmir. Is the Taliban-Al-Qaeda nexus back in Afghanistan? Could Amin ul Haq's return signal the rebirth of once the most dreaded terror organization? There are reports that the arms that have fallen into the Taliban's hand are also being diverted to other terror groups. So the question arises, are the Taliban's claim of not providing safe haven to any terror group just a mere ploy? Due to such instances, the Taliban's return to power in Afghanistan has raised alarm that several terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda will rise up to threaten the world. The ripple effect of U.S. troops' withdrawal from Afghanistan is already making itself felt in Jammu and Kashmir. With constant efforts to infiltrate terrorists and push narcotics into Indian territory, Pakistan is consistently making attempts to hamper peace and accord in the region. But to their much disappointment, all such plans get thwarted at the hands of Indian security forces who are marching well ahead on their mission of making Diwali terrorism-free. A report. Indian security forces recently foiled a major narcotic smuggling bid along the international border in Jammu and Kashmir and seized at least 10 kilograms of heroin. This was one of the several incidents of drug smuggling from Pakistan's side in recent months that has caught the attention of the security forces. Recently, lashkar e taiba and Hezbul Mujahideen operatives based across the border in Pakistan were found to be a part of a deep-rooted conspiracy for procuring and selling narcotics drugs and generating funds in Jammu and Kashmir and other parts of India in close association with seven residents of Union Territory who were arrested by India's National Investigation Agency in the Handwara narco-terrorism case. The police had 21 kilogram heroin and 1.34 crore Indian currency total worth of 200 crore rupees from the possession of Lashkar operatives last year in the same case. To keep its terror machine running, Pakistan has been using narcotics as a major financing tool. But to its much disappointment and humiliation, even the narco-terror network of Islamabad stands exposed now as the Indian security forces have upped their arms against Pakistan's sponsored terrorism at all fronts. 
after article 370 of abrogation and the crackdown on all this money that was coming in from Pakistan and other through hawala transactions or through other channels, there has been a lack of funds with the people over there who are working at the behest of Pakistan and therefore, Pakistan decided that it is better to send them narcotics. It would achieve the aim of providing money to its people over there. Second is that it will spoil the younger generation of the Indian uh, nation all throughout. The ripple effect of US troops withdrawal from Afghanistan is already making itself felt in Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir has witnessed a slight rise in violence. Terror launch pads close to the border are being active again, with Pakistan-based terrorist outfits stepping up efforts to push cadres into the Indian region. Intelligence agencies say at least six groups of terrorists have infiltrated the Kashmir Valley with some high-value targets on their agenda, and as many as 300 terrorists have again occupied the camps across the line of control, which were abandoned after ceasefire was announced in February this year. Meanwhile, after months of fighting along with the Taliban, several terrorists of the banned terror group lashkar e taiba and jaish e muhammad have come back to their homes in Pakistan with a renewed focus on Kashmir. If you recollect, the past one year, more than 110 of these militants have been wiped out by the Indian Army who were operating in either Kashmir Valley or trying to infiltrate into India. Therefore, now, but with this Taliban victory, they have got a sort of emboldened to now try and say that we could again attempt to try to destabilize India and walk into India as they were doing earlier, which is a fallacy on their part. The Indian Army is capable enough of foiling all such moves. Pakistan intelligence agency and terror groups are also carrying out recruitment in Jammu and Kashmir using applications in cyber and mobile space as direct physical interactions have become difficult due to the security forces' hawk-eyed vigil. As per security forces, cyber terrorists, also known as white-collar jihadis, are the worst kind of terrorists who remain anonymous but cause an immeasurable amount of damage and brainwashing of youngsters. They mislead the youth and general population by peddling lies on social media and twisting the situation to suit the separatists or terrorist groups. The Jammu and Kashmir police recently arrested five suspected white-collar jihadis who were behind a campaign to spread falsehood about the sovereignty of the country. They were running a blog site, kashmirfight.wordpress.com, wherein the name of the victim was first published he was profiled, giving detailed justification as to how and why he is a legitimate target for the terrorists and subsequently his actual execution by the terror groups. Several reports and research papers have time and again highlighted the interlink between the cyberspace, Islamist radicalization and terror financing that is aimed at expanding the outreach of extremist ideologies among the gullible youth and collect funds for their malicious deeds. With Taliban control over Afghanistan, there's a serious threat not only to India but to the entire humanity. Security experts are warning that many terror groups will use this opportunity to reorganize and launch more terror attacks. Therefore, a UNSC resolution was adopted last week under the presidency of India, which called on the Taliban to keep its commitments on preventing terror groups in Afghanistan and to urge them to assist the safe evacuation of all wishing to leave the country. We take a look. The departure of US and NATO forces from Afghanistan has come as a massive morale boost to jihadis all over the world. Nations across the globe now need to unite to prevent Afghanistan lapsing back into becoming a haven for international terrorist groups. Therefore, around the time the last US soldier was exiting Kabul, the United Nations Security Council under India's presidency adopted a resolution on the situation in Afghanistan. It addressed India's concerns on terrorism, 
by underlining the risk posed by UN designated individuals and groups like Pakistan based Lashkar e Taiba and Jesh e Mohammed. The resolution came on the penultimate day of India's presidency of the Security Council for the month of August. I was in particular very happy to preside over the adoption of today's important resolution on Afghanistan, which has unequivocally conveyed that Afghanistan's territory should not be used to threaten or attack any country or to shelter train terrorists or plan or finance terrorist acts. It underlines terrorist individuals and entities designated by UN Security Council 1267. This is of direct importance to India. Today, uncertainty is fueling concerns among Afghans and international observers about what life will be like under the new Taliban takeover. Insurgent group seizure of power has triggered panic among those who think they will be targeted by its harsh brand of Islamic law. Therefore, many have decided to migrate. Over the past few days, a large number of people have been evacuated and thousands of desperate Afghans and other nationals are still trying to leave the country. With Kabul airport closed now, crowds seeking to flee Afghanistan are gathering on its borders. Hence, the UNSC resolution also called for the Taliban to facilitate safe passage for people wanting to leave the country. It also wants the insurgent group to allow humanitarians to access the country and uphold human rights. The resolution also notes the statement by the Taliban on the 27th of August and the Security Council does expect them to adhere to their commitments including regarding the safe, secure and orderly departure from Afghanistan, of Afghans and all foreign nationals. The resolution also recognizes the importance of upholding human rights, especially of Afghan women, children and minorities, as well as to inclusive negotiated settlement and to humanitarian assistance to Afghanistan. India has always played a constructive role in Afghanistan and has provided assistance in training and infrastructure improvements, which helped Afghanistan in maintaining stability and governance. The physical border that it shares with Afghanistan under the illegal occupation of Pakistan also mandates this for its own security. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at nin.com. This is Shreya Savajay signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.